Good morning. I have Susan on her tippy toes here to <laughs> I love having you a little closer in my height. This is great. <laughs> oh, you guys, welcome this morning to our live video and welcome Susan again. Glad you're here. So give us a comment as you are popping in today. We got one. I love it. We got one. The new way we're doing this, we can see the counter so we can see who is popping on and watching. So even if you're not commenting, we see you. See you. It's like Santa. <laughs> yes, always watching. So give us a comment if you can see and hear us right now so we know we're in the right place doing all the right things. And we are going to get started today. So Susan, you guys might remember if you are one of our loyal followers and you tuned in last week, Susan was here on Thursday and... It didn't go so well. <laughs> Susan, to no fault of Susan's, it did not go well. Um, we... I guess one good thing is we figured out why things weren't going well. We figured out the problem. So it, it the video she did just experienced a lot of skipping. We actually had to record three different version or sessions of it. And we ended up deleting the video because it was just not a good experience for replay watchers to, you know, struggle through the skipping and the freezing. And so Susan's back today, and Yay. if you caught her last week, she's going to cover some of the same things, but it's yeah. never exactly the same. You might get a tip that you didn't hear last week. Um, she's going to talk about our new stamp and give card kits, so those are a great way to mass produce and gift something for someone else to then be able to send handmade cards throughout the year. So Susan has amazing tips and tricks. Oh, Terry That's says awesome. two of my favorite people. Aww. Hi, Terry. Hi, Terry. <laughs> So you can see the comments coming in now. Here's Mary. That's why I couldn't watch the video last week. Sorry, Mary. That's why. We you did, wouldn't have wanted to. <laughs> we did get lots of questions like, what happened to Susan's video? But I just couldn't, I couldn't bear to put it out there knowing that the watch experience was so bad. So yeah. thankfully, Susan was able to kind of uh, shift things around with Heather. And Heather's going to be here next week. Susan's here again this week to talk about some of the same things from last week. So... I am going to do the camera thing. So yes. as we are trying to figure out a new streaming service, we are doing this just straight from the old school way, which means that I only have one camera set up and that means I'm going to unhook it now. Apologize if I make any of you dizzy as I move you to the other just camera close angle. Just, just close, close your eyes for a minute. I'm yeah. going to come real close to the screen here, a little too close. And we're going to unhook, hopefully without knocking anything over. Okay, here's me. And here we go. Desktop. Okay, you guys, I think the dizzy is over. Let me just get this placemat right where Susan wants it and we'll tack that down so it won't move and the then my off button for later finish right there thank you okay <laughs> okay I'm gonna turn it over to Susan now hi everyone good morning it looks a little dark but is that just because it's rainy here probably oh, it's not actually dark that's just the shadow from the Facebook feed so that oh, you can okay, see good. the comments so oh, they good. can see they're it good clearly. okay yes. good Yes, I'm going to, if you saw, saw last week, I'm sure you probably didn't get the whole thing, but I'm going to cover some of the same things. Um, I'm going to talk about these very cool stamp and give card kits. And some of them, um, I really think you could use if you wanted to replace the foilets that came out this week. These are awesome kits, all ready to go. It's nice to have the card bases folded and scored for you. They have six of everything in it so that you can do the card base, the envelope, and then give them away. And I actually seriously do this a lot. I do a lot of giving of kits. And I did my niece's bridal shower a couple of months ago. And everyone that attended, my thank you gift to them for attending was that they got a set of six cards from me um, and... I, hopefully they all liked it. I had a lot of good response. So I do this quite often. I even keep a set in my car. I had some extras after the shower and I keep a set in my car for like, I've given one to my hairstylist. I've given one to my uh, hygienist. So just kind of keep them around for people that I want to 
kind of show them what I do and show them my appreciation. So, and they're an awesome thing at Christmas time. So stepping it up a bit is I love this idea of having the sentiments separate so that your recipient can decide what they want to use. So I think this whole group text is super cool. Again, this was last week, Tuesday's release, but I think that's great to keep it separate so that they can decide. Uh, when I did the card kits for my niece's shower, I attached them and I thought afterwards, I thought this would have been such a good idea. Then people could decide what they wanted or what they needed. And I double knotted this. So I've got to cut it to show you. This was one of the kits. Um, I don't know if it's one, there's one, two, three, and four, but this is the one with the blue corn, the Dijon, and the olive colors of card bases in it. I'm going to show you how I made this one, minus the splattering. I try not to do splattering around anything important because I personally have a habit of getting my splatter everywhere. So these have like a gold splatter on them. And I did, to carry that gold theme through, I had embossed that group text on these. And I do already have the foam adhesive on the back for my recipient to use. See, here's a gold splatter. I, I get it everywhere. So when I do splatter, I try to take it downstairs somewhere or outside where I'm not going to get anything important. But I'm going to show you how I made this one and how I have lots of little tricks for mass producing, beings I do honestly do it quite often. So let me set this set aside. Thank you, Taylor. She's getting my camera so it won't fall over. That would be good, right? So I'll set that aside for right now. Um, and that's what I'm gonna show you. This is one more that I did, and I will kind of talk you through this one when I'm done with my leaves here. So when I mass produce, one of my th things, especially for my niece's set was with one of Taylor's stamp and die com or stencil and st stamp and stencil combo. Sorry, I'll get it right yet. Um, for my niece's shower, I did one of the floral ones and I did a setup very similar to this and it helped me mass produce them because I did 30 sets. So the first thing I like to do is get my Misty out because we all love our Misty, right? And let me see, is there any other comments? Oh, thank you. Peggy says, beautiful, so beautiful. Thank you. Um, this fall foliage background and stamp and stencil combo, the first thing I like to do is grab my Misty, I'm gonna set it up. I'm gonna go ahead and place the background stamp. I know it isn't perfectly square in here. This one's meant for your A2 cards and your um, slimline cards, but I'm gonna still take this line and kind of follow it with my stamp. I'm gonna make sure, because the background stamp should line up with this line. And then I will get it between the squares. And this will make sense why I'm messing with this, but I kind of want it in a basic, basic similar spot for all of these. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna ink it up. I'm gonna use chocolate truffle. I just think it's, uh, with that stamping on the craft that's in that kit, uh, with the stamp and give kits, I kinda like the chocolate truffle instead of using a black. You could use whatever. And if you wanted to just set the, the toffee cardstock that's already cut for you in there and use the foilets instead, that that would be really fun to um, just to use. You can do the foilets in the exact same way that I'm gonna show you here. Um, but just put this back in your stash if you decided to do something like that. But for this one, I'm gonna go ahead and use the stuff that's in that kit. I am going to take some adhesive and I know I brought, sorry, I brought tape runner. I always like to put a little bit just in the middle just to keep my paper in place because with backgrounds, you obviously know you can't use your awesome misty magnets. So I like to t take down some of that tack. And then I'm gonna line up my cardstock. I did take the toffee cardstock that's in those stamp and give card kits and I cut it down with the largest of the sti stitched rectangle stacks. I cut that down. I wanted one layer. If you, let me see if I can bring my sample back in here. I wanted one layer of buttercream in there just to kind of lighten up those cards. So tack that down. I let this sit a minute here, so I'm gonna go ahead and re-ink it. And then I should have my Just Press tool, but I don't. 
Luckily, it's long sleeve weather here today. It's raining and cold in Iowa. Very gross. <laughs> and then, so that gives me my background and that I would do all six of my card front panels that way. But I am going to take this chocolate truffle and I'm gonna re-stamp it, re-ink it. And I'm gonna grab some more of Taylor's. I love these. These are the grid mats for the Misty. Beings, this stamp and stencil combo has three different stencils to it. I'm gonna stamp three of these. I can use the one that I had laying in my Misty. And then I will do one more. Can I still join you? Yeah. Okay. Is there anything wrong? <laughs> there... No, I just uh, had time open up, and so if people have questions and you can't get to them, I thought I'd oh, okay. just tell you. I actually have been seeing a few. Right now I'm just seeing who's watching. Okay. I had one comment I saw. But I'm going to stamp all three of these, and that'll make sense with when I cover what the stencils here in a second. So I have three of them now, so I'm going to take these three, and we'll take them with us going to put that in there so I don't get ink all over my misty base. Set that aside. And then, so I have all three of these set up and ready to go, and I didn't do that one, did I? Sorry, let me do the last one. I guess I decided to move it, so we'll go back. I need to have three. The rules of three, no. <laughs> Just need one for each stencil. So we'll get that out of the way. And then my tip that I shared last week and I'll share again, is that I do like to kind of prep my stencils a little bit. And if you're one that likes your, your supplies to stay pristine and clean, don't do this, but it's something that really helps me, is I will take like an alcohol wipe or a piece of paper towel with a little bit of like 70% rubbing alcohol on it. I happen to have, I keep in my stamp room either these little prep wipes, they're alcohol wipes. I also have a bottle of this around. I'm not sure I'll buy this again because I find they kind of dry out in a hurry. But I tried it and it, it works. I'll keep it around. I don't know if I'll replace it once it's gone. But I'll take a Sharpie. I prefer a silver one just because it's not quite as harsh as a black. And I take my Sharpie and go right over all those etched lines. I don't even have to be perfect about it. And then I just wait a couple of seconds, three, four, five seconds, and then I wipe it off. And what that does, I think you can see it, is it puts a gray line and kind of brings out that etching for me a little bit. It'll make sense in a, make sense in a second. I know I showed this in one of our Stamp Joys that I also do it for the title of my stencils just so I know which is the right side up of all my stencils because you want that etching to be up when you use your stencils. There is a right and a wrong side to stencils, so that always helps me just to be able to see it, brings the etching out just a little bit more. So, And the alcohol helps take some of that ink off that's on the Sharpie. So, I prefer the silver one. Bought it a long time ago. I assume they still sell them. Black would work. You probably just have to move a little bit quicker with the black. Then I will take my stencil, and I, that way I can see these etching lines a little bit better. And I can line them up right over top of that paper that I stamped. So this is the paper that's meant to be in the Misty, um, and one of those that I stamped three of. And I will take, and I will line up all those etching lines right over, can you see that? Right over top. Does that come through at all, Taylor? Oh, yes. I see where you're going here, and I like you do. it a lot. Thanks. So once you line those up, then you can tape it down. Let's see if I get that straight. We'll tape it down. And that's one of my stencil setups. So I'll do all three here. Never mind that they're still dirty. No one's going to notice that, right? I saved them because I was going to do another kit. I didn't want to take them apart just yet. So this way, once I, it'll make sense, a whole lot of sense in a second, but it'll make it easier for when you're mass producing and you're putting your card bases down again and again. So line that up. 
tape it. Last one coming up. It's my third one. And you could have used the one that was in your Misty for stamping the, the actual stamp. I just didn't get it done, so I grabbed another one. So again, you can see these lines a little bit better. Whatever, whatever Sharpie you like, just something that you can wipe off so you don't have a bunch sitting up on the top. I'm mainly trying to get it into the grooves of this etching. So, and you can also obviously see that you have your spines of your leaves all lined up, but also these etching lines help you line it up, both things. I would pay attention to both. Tape that down. Then I also, one other housekeeping thing that I like to do is to get a little bit of that tape runner on the the misty what is the proper name for that taylor the misty these grid paper grid, a grid, grid paper paper all right we'll go with that misty. grid paper placement i put a little bit of the tape runner down just because that will hold my card base actually named it on the website <laughs> i'm sure charlie has it by now so what the reason why I went through all that work is because now when I come back, I can see that that's there. I can come back and lay my card base down and then all of these little twigs or veins of the leaves, I can watch it run from my card stock where I stamped it off onto my placemat. And once I have it right where I want it and it's all lined up, one, I do like to take a pencil and I'll do this for the first couple. I will go ahead and draw a rectangle around where that went. It'll just make it a little bit easier to catch my lines the, every time after that. You don't have to do this step, but I do like to take a pencil and draw around it. It's not absolutely necessary. It just kind of helps you, I don't know, right away know where I'm going. And if I use a pencil and I happen to get any lead on there, I can just erase it. So. That's set up, and I can ink blend my blue corn with this one. Again, that was chocolate truffle ink on the toffee card base. I'm gonna just ink blend a little blue corn on this one. And this way, every time after this, I also think when you ink blend the first time, if you even go off onto the leaves that are not actually going on your card base, it'll help you later just because it's just one more level of being able to see where this card base panel goes back down. And I, it wiggled on me, so I'm gonna go ahead. I should have done this earlier. Put a little bit of purple tape down just to make sure the other side stays. I didn't use pixie spray on this. Um, you could, I just didn't feel the need. I definitely use my pixie spray when it's a more detailed stencil but this will make sense then when you pick this up so i've got the rectangle and beings i kind of blend it off the next time when i come in with another base it'll be easy just to lay it right there so i'll show you with this next one so obviously i know which side was up now too of my card base line these up and again i can get my little twigs going right off onto that piece of paper I can see it down here where this vein is going right off. And does that, I hope that makes sense. So that'll make it easier just to line it up each time you come in. Now, if I'm doing just one, I wouldn't go through the trouble of setting this up, but it's mainly for the mass production of it. It'll just make it easier every time you drop one in. So that looks lined up and I will go ahead. Granted, I, this is a little bit of work for the first one, but then the next five, or if I do another whole set this will be all set up and honestly after i did mine i didn't take it apart because i fully plan to just keep reusing this one so this one will be my dijon which this is a brand new ink pad for me i'm excited I took the label off this morning taylor i had a mini one i don't know why i never upgraded to the full size we're getting a lot of comments that everyone is so glad that you are revisiting this. So oh, I'm good. Glad that this plan worked out. Yay. Thank you, Heather, for letting me bump you around. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I would be curious if anyone finished it last week before we deleted it. <laughs> if they stuck with it long enough, that's that would be patience, whoever. So again, I drew this square around that one. So being as I used a pencil, it's really light, but it a pencil just makes it so that if you run off, onto your card base, you don't have to, you can get, get it nice and cleaned up again. And then we'll move to the olive. Sorry, I'm gonna clean up here a bit. I have a rule of only one ink pad open at a time. Otherwise I seem to not look and I just take my brush to the wrong ink pad. So Dijon, blue, blue corn, corn and olive. And it happens to be the exact colors that are in this kit. I didn't even. Kit number. Let me see if I can find it. Taylor's going to look up the number for us. So then this is the olive. Four. Four. Taylor said it's the stamp and give kit four. I kind of like these kits because it really just makes it so easy. I just followed the colors that were in the kit. Don't think about it. Just do it. <laughs> She has guilt when she breaks Susan's ink pad rule. Do you? Do you have messy brushes too? <laughs> Don't have guilt. I have messed too many. <laughs> I have messed up way too many things. And I don't think I did the square or the rectangle around this one. So I'm going to do it quick. I will thank myself the next time I go through. So then... When I go to the next one, granted, I do not have the leaves stamped or the spines stamped here, but then I will just follow that line next time, and it should be pretty close. It could wiggle a smidge, but it should be pretty close, and that way you can just drop them in again and again and again. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to test it quick. Let's stamp it. Joanne says she watched it last time, but it's much easier to follow. This, this time. <laughs> she watched it all the way through last time. I'm impressed. She said so. That's oh, so impressive. did Tal or Sally Tanner. Went to the end also. Wow. I'm very impressed by the patience. I don't think I would have had. I think I would have given up. So good on them. Hopefully, I'm showing that I at least did a different uh, stamp and die combo this time. So, hopefully, they're learning something or picking out something new. So, I just wanted to show you. We'll take one more background. I won't blend them all, but I just wanted to come back and show you at least the square rectangle that I kind of ske that sketched out there will guide me a little bit. I might still need to because it just kind of depends where you stamp your background each time. But I can still run this line, and then every one from here on out will be much easier because I already have it all lined up, ready to go. I keep seeing you use your sleeve, so. I know, thank you. There you are. I said that earlier. I, before you walked in, I was like, oh, I don't have my just press tool. <laughs> I know, I'm gonna wear out my sleeve, give it lots of fuzzies. That's bad. Pilling of no. a beautiful sweater. <laughs> I don't want any pilling. So that was this card kit that I made. EJ has a question. Yes, um, fire away. When you really are doing mass producing in your own studio, do you do all of one color at the same time or all the layers of a background at once? Um, I think when I did my nieces, I did all of the same color. But when I did this one, um, I know I... I just went through because I really wanted to see it. I was really enjoying the finished product. I know I went through and just did, because this one's only two, I did the bottom part of the wings first. Because this one, I was trying to do a heavy layer, and then the top half of the butterflies was a light layer. And I wanted to keep in my head light, heavy, light, heavy. So I did all the light, which is the upper part of the wings first. Um, so it kind of depends on what you're working with. So like this one, I would probably do all the olive get it out of the way, get that stencil out of the way, do all the Dijon. So if that helps, but something like this where I was trying to keep track, I think I have them. This is from my video last week. I think I have them still laying here. Um, see, I wrote heavy because the bottom half of my wings, I put a heavy layer of the guava, pineapple, and confetti cake, but the tops, 
the top part of the wings was a light ink. And just to keep it straight in my head, then I did all of those first. So, so it kind of depends. Leave yourself yeah. notes so that when you're switching back and forth, you I don't did. forget. I did. <laughs> I, yep, the pencil lines, the notes, it's all for a good reason. And then I did our double-edged, um, double-flagged banners. And just to give the sentiment a place to land so my recipient really didn't have to guess about where they wanted to put whatever sentiment they were using. I put the foam on the back of these already, and that's how it will look once they put their cards together. So that was that kit. Um, I, that's my main tip is to set those uh, stencils up on your grid mat. I think that's very helpful. That's not good. We had a lot of questions after your last video that came in just through Messenger and such on what sentiments you used on that particular project? This one is just the group text occasions that came out a, a week ago on Tuesday it's and the matching die. Has it been a so couple? No. Sorry. I don't even remember. Maybe you're it's right. It's all running. I'm pretty sure it was last week. <laughs> okay. Anyway, that is, that's the sentiment I used for that one. Now this one, which I'm going to show you next, a tip for this one, um, because this is the sentiments that I used for my nieces. And um, I wanna show you how I set that up. It's kind of a cheater way of looking at it, but I don't know, we said we shouldn't call it that, I right? I wouldn't call it cheater, I would call it smart. Smart, okay. Yeah. So I'll show you how I did these. Um, you could, this one is, this, these sentiments are part the, a part of the hand-lettered sentiments, which if you all have watched anything I have done, you know these are my favorite thing. <laughs> Taylor's like something else. I love these. These are my favorite. So for my niece's shower, I did not use these two that choose joy and you mean the world to me. You totally could have. Um, I just wanted, I wanted some just basic things to put in there. So I did skip those two. And what I did is I set them up in my Misty, which again, can't live without my Misty. And I set them up to be on the bottom half of a half sheet of cardstock. So this is a half sheet of our sugar cube cardstock, and I set it up so that they would land in my Misty on the bottom half. And the reason why is because I'm going to take this cardstock and rotate it and stamp it again. So I took some, I do love poppy seed. I have this here uh, for my nieces, um, the gifts that I gave. I used poppy seeds. Sometimes I just like a little less harsh black, so less Oreo. No one says that, do they? No one wants less Oreo, do they? <laughs> Ink up the black and then stamp it. And thank you for my Just Press tool. And obviously I'm gonna show you here, I did, there's a little bit of waste, but not much, not that I thought was worth it to me. So being as I can, I'm gonna double stamp this. Make it a little sharper, a little more crisp. Then I can take this, I will rotate it because if, if I got this paper in my hand, I might as well just keep working with it. You could just cut it down to a quarter sheet of cardstock. I am very much when I mass produce one thing at a time. So I would cut all my card bases. Granted with these, you this is all taken care of for you. But I would do all my cutting first. Then I would do all my blending, I, I definitely go in big chunks of taking care of things. And with these, this will give you eight if you do it this way. Granted, the card kit is six in there, but um, if you do all eight of these, that will help your recipient have whatever, hopefully whatever their, their need is. So I have that set up and I will leave that there so I can do more. Then what I did is I took the, the dies that come with the hand, hand lettered sentiments and I laid them and I'll take a couple of these apart just so I can show you. I'm gonna be lazy and, and not take them all apart. So I, take, I took them and I laid them over top of where they're supposed to be I'm all lined up there in my end so everyone can see me. 
we don't want to waste that purple tape. We'll still use it, even though I took them apart. Lay this over top of where you want to go. And this works with any sentiment set, because I know there's some scripty new ones for Christmas that have like Happy Holidays, Merry Christmas. Um, I can't think of the other sentiments, but any set that has like three of something, if you're making Christmas cards, um, as long as you're okay with people either having Happy Holidays or Merry Christmas and not the exact same sentiment, you can do this. So just line them up and then I tape them and I'll tape one down. I'm going to use some. I'll tape one down and then I'll tape the other one down and I'll try to make those dies. The wider purple tape really works well for this. I'll make those dies touch so that I'm using the purple tape on both. Then we'll come in here with this thinking of you. I have Cindy wants to know if you all if you do she calls it ladder eating. Like you eat all the meat, then you eat nope. all the veggies, then you eat all the no. no, but that in my mass producing, yes, that would be true. But no, I have a girlfriend like that and I love it. I am very much like I need, because I'm a salty sweet girl, I'll eat potato chips, then M&M's. Potato chips and M&M's. No, so no. I can't do that either, the latter. I, have I didn't know there was a name for it. I didn't it. know there was either, but I have a kid like that, and I'm always kind of, I almost scold her, like, you got to eat more of your whatever it is, but she likes to eat all of one thing first. That's and funny. Then, yeah. My brother's that way too, and I always say to him, your French fries are getting cold while you're eating your hamburger, and <laughs> French fries are much better warm. Just in my record, but no, I have a friend like that. And my brother's like that. I think it's adorable. The, but that would that also fall under then your food can't touch either? Oh. I do have a rule about that. Don't I don't want my food. food. Mm -hmm. Ta neither Taylor. I don't know if you guys can hear Taylor. Our, uh, I don't like, I do not like my food touching though. When my sister takes her mashed potatoes and puts the peas all together, I'm out. I'm like, don't do that. <laughs> So, he likes it all mixed. Yeah, we mix in like ground up hamburger and <laughs> corn and potatoes. And, and he's good with that. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay, so I taped it all. And if you see, I made sure I touched them. And I know this is a lot of purple tape I'm using, but one, you can recycle it when you're done. And two, we're going to keep this all together. So bring in my die cut machine. I'm sure you know where I'm going with this, especially if you watched last week. <laughs> a mess I'm running into things okay so we can take those all out do you see that they're all then die cut and then I'm sure you see where I'm going with this I'm gonna move this in my stamp room I work myself off of the table onto my lap and I do this here at the studio too so just be really careful as you're peeling up that you don't pull those dies apart because you went through that trouble of putting them all together. I'm almost more concerned about my dies staying together than I am where this worried about where the sentiment is going. So what I'll do is take that, make sure there's nothing stuck in any of those nooks and crannies that you do have to take care of, but then you can just turn it over, set it down, line it up. I've been doing this for years and I never thought it was anything clever until I was like, Notice Taylor had all these, like the, what was the, the simple strips. I was like, oh, I've kind of been doing that, but not in that way. Just yes. keeping them all together. I'm all about efficiency. So line them up, tape it down, and die cut it again. Everybody's asking about your purple tape. So I have replied to a couple of comments, but... Um, the purple tape Susan's using is no longer available. Oh, which sorry, old. It's okay. We're like nursing our last few rolls around here, and I'm sort of starting to get a little bit uh, hyperventilating mm -hmm. about what are we going to do. But I do think that Thermoweb, the manufacturer, is working on a similar product. They're just not able to source the purple tape anymore, and they have eliminated the purple tape with the flowers in case that's something you have purchased in the past. Can so. I, Can you guys chime in that you can hear, Taylor? I know can during stamps... Can you hear, Taylor? 
So as I'm poking these all out, waiting for someone to say, I can hear you. Because during stamped, one of the virtual stamp joys, we had people say that they couldn't and hear the people not near the camera. But Taylor, you guys, I'm just going to, I'm not hearing anyone say that. Yep, you can also, Heather Nichols says you can also do this with press and seal. Yes, absolutely. Probably easier, but I don't have press and seal up in my stamp room. I should move some up there. Um, but you could use purple tape. Also that post-it note tape that you sell, that big roll. I've used that before too. Anything that will keep them all together, whatever works for you. I'll run this through just so you can see that it lined up and did its job again. Most people are saying they can hear me. Cindy says oh, good. it sounds like I'm in the root cellar. I don't know what that means, but Is maybe I'm echoey or sound far away. The root cellar. Okay, so I learned something new again today. So it's ladder eating and root cellar. Is that where you put the onions and potatoes? In the basement? So again, I won't, I'll just show you the sentiment. So that way I have four sentiments again, all ready to go. I really like Heather's idea of using the press and seal. I'm gonna have to take some of that up to my, I've used it before when I wanna keep other like die cuts that are falling out of something together. But I guess I hadn't thought about it for this, probably just because I reach for my, my purple tape. I think it's easier to grab the little pieces and get them right where I want it. But once I have it all together, that press and seal would be great. That's how I ended up with all the sentiments that I could, I still need to get all the little pieces out of the middle of these. But that's how I ended up with all the little sentiments to put in the bag and my recipient can put those on top of their cards. So I did use one of our circle stitch stacks to cut out a circle and then that's where they'll put their sentiment. And you could put a little foam tape behind that or you could even put it behind the circle if you wanted to put the circle in the baggie. But those are, I think, did I leave off any tips from last week? I'm trying to think. I think the dies, the stencils were my big tips, I believe. Um, I just got to show you this. I haven't finished this set, but I literally have to show you. I was working on this. So this is, again, where I followed the colors because I was like, well, I really like these colors Taylor put together. What would they look like on a card? So I took these. I'm missing one. Which one am I missing? Sorry, I'm missing one. Oh, the peach one. Hmm. Lost it somewhere along the lines. I'm missing the peaches and cream. Uh, it's probably at home, Taylor, but thank you. <laughs> um, I blended these and I did the different colors from the top. So I did the fruit punch, then the guava, then I did the peaches and cream, then this is potato chip, then I did the mint, and then the last color is blue raspberry. So I did all the colors that she had in her kit. And this is, they're done, I just need to glue them together. So that's the last one that I did. Um, it's a little messed up because I took the toffee uh, card base out um, that was just a preference. You can use that toffee card base to cut your circles. Anyway, that was all I was going to show you today. I think I covered it all. I'm really glad we didn't have to click out and click back in for you today. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something and I hope you have a great day. Bye.